Himalayas, or Himalaya are a mountain range in Asia, separating the plains of the Indian subcontinent from the Tibetan Plateau. The range has some of the planet's highest peaks, including the very highest, Mount Everest. Over 100 peaks exceeding 7,200 meters 23,600 feet in elevation lie in the Himalayas. By contrast, the highest peak outside Asia Aconcagua, in the Andes, is 6,961 meters 22,838 feet tall. The Himalayas abut or cross five countries, Bhutan, India, Nepal, China, and Pakistan. The sovereignty of the range in the Kashmir region is disputed among India, Pakistan, and China. The Himalayan range is bordered on the northwest by the Karakoram and Hindu Kush ranges, on the north by the Tibetan Plateau, and on the south by the Indo-Gangetic Plain. Some of the world's major rivers, the Indus, the Ganges, and the Sangpo Brahmaputra, rise in the vicinity of the Himalayas, and their combined drainage basin is home to some 600 million people, 53 million people live in the Himalayas. The Himalayas have profoundly shaped the cultures of South Asia and Tibet. Many Himalayan peaks are sacred in Hinduism and Buddhism, the summits of several, Kanchanjunga, from the Indian side. Gangkar Puensam, Mashapuchair, Nanda Devi and Kailas in the Tibetan Tranchimalaya, are off-limits to climbers. Lifted by the subduction of the Indian tectonic plate under the Eurasian plate, the Himalayan mountain range runs west-northwest to east-southeast in an arc 2,400 kilometers, 1,500 miles long. Its western anchor, Nanga Parbat, lies just south of the northernmost bend of the Indus River. Its eastern anchor, Namcha Barwa, lies immediately west of the great bend of the Yarlung Sangpo River. The range varies in width from 350 kilometers, 220 miles, in the west to 150 kilometers, 93 miles, in the east. There are many cultural and mythological aspects associated with the Himalayas. In Jainism, Mount Ashtapad of the Himalayan mountain range, is a sacred place where the first Jain Tirthankara, Rishabdeva attained moksha. It is believed that after Rishabdeva attained nirvana, his son, Emperor Bharata Chakravartin, had constructed three stupas and twenty-four shrines of the twenty-four Tirthankaras with their idols studded with precious stones over there and named it Sinishta. For the Hindus, the Himalayas are personified as Himavat, king of all mountains and the father of the goddess Parvati. The Himalayas are also considered to be the father of Ganga, the personification of river Ganges. Two of the most sacred places of pilgrimage for the Hindus are the temple complex in Pashupadinath and Muktinath, also known as Salagrama because of the presence of the sacred black rocks called Salagrams. The Buddhists also lay a great deal of importance on the Himalayas. Paro Taktisang is the holy place where Buddhism started in Bhutan. The Muktinath is also a place of pilgrimage for the Tibetan Buddhists. They believe that the trees in the poplar grove came from the walking sticks of 84 ancient Indian Buddhist magicians or Mahasiddhas. They consider the salagrams to be representatives of the Tibetan serpent deity known as Gawo Jagpa. The Himalayan people's diversity shows in many different ways. It shows through their architecture, their languages, and dialects, their beliefs and rituals, as well as their clothing. The shapes and materials of the people's homes reflect their practical needs and beliefs. Another example of the diversity amongst the Himalayan peoples is that handwoven textiles display colors and patterns unique to their ethnic backgrounds. Finally, some people place great importance on jewelry. The Rai and Limba women wear big gold earrings and nose rings to show their wealth through their jewelry. Several places in the Himalayas are of religious significance. In Hinduism, Buddhism, Jainism and Sikhism. A notable example of a religious site is Paro Taktisang where Pamamsambhava is said to have founded Buddhism in Bhutan. A number of Vajrayana Buddhist sites are situated in the Himalayas, in Tibet, Bhutan and in the Indian regions of Ladakh, Sikkim, Arunachal Pradesh, Spiti and Darjeeling. There were over 6,000 monasteries in Tibet, including the residence of the Dalai Lama. Bhutan, Sikkim and Ladakh are also dotted with numerous monasteries. The Himalayas are home to a diversity of medicinal resources. Plants from the forests have been used for millennia to treat conditions ranging from simple coughs to snake bites. Different parts of the plants, root, flower, stem, leaves, and bark, are used as remedies for different ailments. For example, a bark extract from an abbey's pindro tree is used to treat coughs and bronchitis. Leaf and stem paste from an andron cordifolia is used for wounds and as an antidote for snake bites. The bark of a calicarpa arborea is used for skin ailments.
Nearly a fifth of the gymnosperms, angiosperms and pteridophytes in the Himalayas are found to have medicinal properties, and more are likely to be discovered. Most of the population in some Asian and African countries depends on medicinal plants rather than prescriptions and such. Since so many people use medicinal plants as their only source of healing in the Himalayas, the plants are an important source of income. This contributes to economic and modern industrial development both inside and outside the region. The vast size, huge altitude range, and complex topography of the Himalayas mean they experience a wide range of climates, from humid subtropical in the foothills to cold and dry desert conditions on the Tibetan side of the range. For much of the Himalayas, in the areas to the south of the high mountains, the monsoon is the most characteristic feature of the climate and causes most of the precipitation, while the western disturbance brings winter precipitation, especially in the west. Heavy rain arrives on the southwest monsoon in June and persists until September. The monsoon can seriously impact transport and cause major landslides. It restricts tourism. The trekking and mountaineering season is limited to either before the monsoon in April, May or after the monsoon in October, November, autumn. In Nepal and Sikkim, there are often considered to be five seasons. Summer, monsoon, autumn, or post-monsoon, winter, and spring. Using the Köppen climate classification, the lower elevations of the Himalayas, reaching in mid-elevations in central Nepal, including the Kathmandu Valley, are classified as CWA, humid subtropical climate with dry winters. Higher up, most of the Himalayas have a subtropical highland climate, CWB. The intensity of the southwest monsoon diminishes as it moves westward along the range, with as much as 2,030 mm in, of rainfall in the monsoon season in Darjeeling in the east, compared to only 975 mm in, during the same period in Shimla in the west. The northern side of the Himalayas, also known as the Tibetan Himalaya, is dry, cold and, generally, windswept particularly in the west where it has a cold desert climate. The vegetation is sparse and stunted and the winters are severely cold. Most of the precipitation in the region is in the form of snow during the late winter and spring months. Local impacts on climate are significant throughout the Himalayas. Temperatures fall by 0.2 to 1.2 degrees Celsius for every 100 meters, 330 feet, rise in altitude. This gives rise to a variety of climates from a nearly tropical climate in the foothills, to tundra and permanent snow and ice at higher elevations. Local climate is also affected by the topography, the leeward side of the mountains receive less rain while the well-exposed slopes get heavy rainfall and the rain shadow of large mountains can be significant, for example leading to near-desert conditions in the upper Mustang which is sheltered from the monsoon rains by the Annapurna and Dalagiri massifs and has annual precipitation of around 300 mm 12 in while Pokhara on the southern side of the massifs has substantial rainfall, 3,900 mm or 150 in a year. Thus although annual precipitation is generally higher in east than the west, local variations are often more important. The Himalayas have a profound effect on the climate of the Indian subcontinent and the Tibetan plateau. They prevent frigid, dry winds from blowing south into the subcontinent, which keeps South Asia much warmer than corresponding temperate regions in the other continents. It also forms a barrier for the monsoon winds, keeping them from traveling northwards, and causing heavy rainfall in the Terai region. The Himalayas are also believed to play an important part in the formation of Central Asian deserts, such as the Taklamakan and Gobi. An acceleration of ice loss across the Himalayas over the past 40 years has been proven with satellite photos. Even if the ambitious 1.5 degrees Celsius target would be reached, the Himalaya glaciers would expectedly lose one-third of their surfaces.